All right, well, today yeah, it's nice and hot, but it is about the, well, I don't remember what today, the 7th of August, 8th of August, something like that. But uh, deer season's just around the corner, and we gotta get going. So we uh, got to get down to our lease land and check out the roads and see how everything fared with all the rain we've been getting. And I gotta have my four wheeler to do that, and it's well overdue for oil change. And this is a 2013 Polaris Sportsman, the 500 HO. And it's been a really good four wheeler. Had a little trouble with the uh, fan, kept cutting on and off. And finally figured all that out, made a video on that. If you wanna see that, I'll put that in the description below. But uh, yeah, it's been a good one. I mean, I've had it since 2013, bought it new. And so far, knock on some wood somewhere or some wood. I hadn't had too much trouble out of it. So we're gonna change the oil on this thing, and it's a little bit of a bugger. You uh, have got to take this cover off right here, which isn't really a big deal. We'll get the oil filter and everything. But the only thing that's really a pain is getting the drain plug out. And it's way, way back in there somewhere. I can't see it right now in the video. But it's way back in there, and it's a bit of a pain to get out. But that's really the only bad thing. But you got to be careful. First time I changed the oil on this thing, I stripped it out bad. And I've actually tried to order a new one two different times. And I cannot get them. There's two different oil drain plugs. This is the one for the reservoir, oil reservoir. And that's the one that always comes. Even though it says it's the other one, that's the one that always comes. So, and they're not the same size. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get started and start taking this thing apart. All right, so the first thing we got to do here is lift our seat up, pull a little latch in the back, takes that off, and then this just pulls right out. It's got one little clip right there that goes in that piece to hold it in. And now you can get to your oil filter and your fill cap for your reservoir. And now we're going to go ahead and loosen this cap up. And I pressure washed this thing, tried to clean it up and get all the dirt off best I could. So when we're working on it, changing the oil, we don't get anything contaminating the oil. So that's always important. So we got that loosened up. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get the tools we need and crawl under this thing and get try to get that plug out. All right, so what you're gonna need is a ES4 oil change kit or the equivalent. You're always gonna have to have a oil filter and it's a 252-0799. I don't know why these don't come packed in plastic, they should. But uh, you're gonna need two quarts. It's full synthetic. But uh, you're gonna need some type of full synthetic oil. And uh, I try to stick with Polaris, the brand name stuff on a lot of stuff, especially stuff I buy new. If I buy old and used, I don't care. It's not, not as important to me. But uh, I definitely try to keep quality oil and filters and everything but older stuff i still i'll run wicks and a brand name oil but not specifically the polaris but uh i don't know if i'll go back with the polaris oil change kits they're getting pretty pricey that was 5w50 right there it is finally found the weight but uh yeah so that's what you're gonna need ps4 oil change kit you're gonna need a pair of pliers motor and prime the oil pump you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket and you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench i think a wrench is easier to get the plug out in the crankcase on this side of the vehicle because it's got a crankcase drain plug and it's got a reservoir drain plug you have to drain them both it's really important because the crankcase i don't remember the exact volume but it's like little less than half a quart i believe that the crankcase holds and if you don't drain that then you're not doing a full oil change so we're gonna go ahead and get started all right so i'm gonna go ahead and take this plug out here make sure my little pan's gonna actually catch it that's not good And we have got fuel in the oil. So that is definitely not good. Oh boy. All right, so she's just about done. We're gonna let it drain all the way out. 
All right, so now right here is your oil filter. There we go. Put up, let it drain. Yeah, we've definitely got some fuel and oil, so that's not good. Our uh, float is obviously has been stuck at some point on our carburetor, so that's not good. All right, so I just pulled the plug out on this side, and it is a pain in the butt to get to. My God! So the best way I found is a wrench. Take a wrench up from the bottom side this is the best way to uh, get to it here. But uh, this thing has seen better days. I messed up the first time that uh, I changed it and rounded it off and I just made it a little bit worse. But we got it out and I'm gonna put it in very loosely and <laughs> I'm gonna get a new one. And I'll change the oil on this thing again soon because I've got a little bit of gas in the oil. So it's been kind of setting for the last couple months. I'm gonna dump a bunch of sea foam in here and hopefully that'll clean the carburetor out and I'll have to pull it off and go through it. But uh, definitely gonna probably have to do something, but I'm gonna have to check it, keep a good eye on it and make sure that there's not getting any more gas in the oil because that is a major issue. It can grenade the motor because pretty much makes the uh, oil much more viscous and takes all the uh, anti-wear out of the oil. So it's gonna be a definite problem we're gonna have to keep an eye on. So we're gonna let this drain out really good. Oil out here, I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate this O-ring just to keep it from tearing. I guess it's a gasket, not technically an O-ring. But uh, I'm gonna go put a little bit of that on there, keep it from tearing. And the thing I wanna do is make sure that the old one is not on there. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall this. Not reinstall, but put the new one on. Make sure we don't cross thread it. And snug it down pretty good. You wanna over tighten it, but pretty decently snug. And there's that, our plug now. And this is a giant pain in the butt. And so, I'm gonna attempt to do this with one hand. I have a feeling I'm gonna fail miserably, but it is so hard to get in there to get to. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do it with one hand. So I'm gonna play and fight with this thing, say a few four letter words, and I got dirt all over it. So make sure you don't get any dirt on your plugs or anything that uh, could get into the crankcase, because that can hurt your motor pretty bad. So. I'm gonna go ahead and take two hands and try to get this plug in here. Well, I finally got it started. It was a pain in the butt. So pretty much the only way I can figure out how to do it is I've got to reach one hand up over here, and one hand up in here and use two hands to uh, get on it and kind of just twist it by a finger in there. So I got it in there and now I'm just gonna tighten it up. To reinstall the plug, For the reservoir here. I'm just gonna start that by hand. You always want to start stuff by hand. You start it with a wrench and you cross thread it and then you're hosed. These things are about, I think they're the last time I saw one on the internet by happenstance, I think was about 140 bucks or something like that. I know they weren't cheap, so definitely want to be careful and you don't want to over tighten it. I'm gonna make sure, because that's just a metal insert into plastic right here. So you wanna make sure you don't over tighten this, for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug this down. And it's probably a good idea to uh, change the gaskets on these. I'm gonna change it pretty soon, again, just to be safe. So I think I'll be all right, but it's a good idea. And that's all you need, good snug, not too tight. So we got our funnel here and the dip dipstick tube cap. That doesn't make any sense. We got our funnel in here. 
this is where your dipstick goes. That makes much more sense. So now we're gonna just go ahead and add our two quarts of oil. Let me be careful because my funnel's at quite a bit of an angle here. So we got our oil in. Let's shake off our uh, funnel there a little bit. We're gonna just loosely kind of screw that in about a turn. And now what we got to do is go over here to the other side. We're on the other side of the reservoir here and you can see, I can get my something in there to point with. Right there is where the oil comes out of the reservoir. And I think it's, don't quote me on this, I think it's every other time you change it is the rule of thumb I go by is you got to pull that out and there's a little screen in there that you've got to uh, clean off. So I just did that the last time I changed it. So I'm going to give it one more time before I pull all that out because it's kind of a kind of pain butt thing. So we're going to go ahead and clamp that off. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and crank this thing up. Oh yeah, the battery's dead. And now let's give it a try. Yeah. So we're going to let it run for about 10-15 seconds. And they say you should hear it's like a swoosh sound or something. I've never heard it. I'm kind of half deaf though. And the engine's running. So you may, I don't know. But we're going to let it run for a minute, circulate the oil, and then we're going to check the oil level, make sure everything's kosher. We're going to run it for a few minutes. We're going to cut it off. And now I'm going to check the oil, make sure the level's good. All right, so I just checked that oil level is still high. So I do not think it primed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up. I'm gonna go through the procedure again. This time I'm gonna give it just, now I don't know, I'm not a Polaris mechanic. But what I'm gonna do is just give it a little bit of throttle, hold a little bit of throttle on it, and then release it and see what it does. That and check the level again. And the jump box is beeping at me. It is right there on it. So it primed that time. So you wanna make sure it primes and sucks oil back in the crankcase. And I don't know if that's the right procedure, so don't don't quote me on that, I'm not a mechanic, but it just worked. So, and the first time it did not. I don't know, this thing seems to idle really low. Maybe supposed to be that way. That time it primed, sucked oil in the case, so. There we go. Right under your seat is your air filter. You wanna always check this and make sure rats haven't built nests in it or anything. And it looks pretty clean. So I'll probably blow that out, but I don't think it's in need of a new one yet. This thing doesn't really get used a whole lot. It only gets used during the fall. Hence my issue with the uh, carburetor leaking gas into the motor. So all you gotta do, is put this panel back in here and it slides in it's got little notches here that it slides in and i'm not going to be able to do it with one hand probably but you get the gist it slides back in just like so kind of hard to line up there we go i got it and that goes in and you just put your seat back on and you're done so what i'm going to try before i tear into the carburetor I'm a true believer in this stuff. I've seen it work miracles. So I'm gonna put a bunch of that in there, put some fresh gas. And actually, finally, I've always ran ethanol gas in here because I have not found a place around the house that's open when I can get to it that uh, sells ethanol free. I finally found one. So this thing will never see any ethanol gas again. That might've been my issue all along. It was probably a big cause of why my carburetor's gummed up. We're going to give this a try first. All right, well, I appreciate everybody watching. And uh, if anybody has any suggestions on uh, what is going on with the carburetor and the fuel and the oil, please let me know. And uh, it's always helpful to have a few hints before you tear into stuff. So I'm going to keep a good check on the oil. I'm going to check it every time I use it now and make sure the oil is, doesn't have an odor and is still of the right viscosity. So uh, appreciate everybody watching. Hope somebody found something helpful. And uh, sorry for the dilemma in the middle of it, but that's what I get for talking about how, how good it's been over the years. But it's just the way things go. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I sure appreciate everybody who already has. And uh, thanks for watching. Please leave a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.